For more than two decades, Hong Kong was the only place in China where people could speak up openly and freely against the leadership in Beijing. But dissent is now a dangerous business here. Since the enactment of a national security law in 2020, dozens of democracy activists have been arrested and nearly all of Hong Kong's prominent opposition politicians have been jailed. Hong Kong's leader, Carrie Lam, insists the law was necessary, following months of sometimes violent anti-government protests. The implementation of the national security law has effectively restored stability in the Hong Kong society. The government is imposing a state of unfreedom on everyone in Hong Kong. <laughs> In the lead-up to two major anniversaries, 101 East follows the Hong Kongers who refuse to be silenced. Every year, for more than three decades, Hong Kong's Victoria Park would transform into a sea of lights on the anniversary of the Tiananmen crackdown. After the handover in 1997, the city became the only place in China where it could be openly commemorated. <laughs> My political awakening starts all from the June 4th Victory Victoria Park from a very young age. So that's my first experience of participating in the mass movement. Activist Chao Hang Tung is vice chairperson of the group behind the vigil. It's been an obsession to see that this issue get a satisfactory resolution, to see that a justice can be done for the all those victims who suffered in the Tiananmen massacre. What's the difference as a Hong Kong people compared to those who are inside China? We still have this freedom, this space to express our different opinion with the government, and that's symbolized by the candlelight in Victoria Park. A group gathering of more than eight people is not allowed in this venue. Offenders are subject to prosecution. In 2020, the government banned the June 4th visual for the first time, citing restrictions linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. But defiant Hong Kongers were determined to go ahead. The national security law was weeks away from being enacted then. This is our constitutional right, and we will still exercise our constitutional right. And to go into Victoria Park to light the candles. Chow joined the act of civil disobedience. Thousands of people, including some of Hong Kong's best-known democracy activists, took part in the unofficial visual. It ended peacefully, but then came the arrests. Police charged 26 activists with participating in an unlawful assembly. Chao Hang Tung was one of them. She's refused to plead guilty. But four activists do so, and in May this year are given sentences of up to 10 months in prison. Outside the law courts, Chow insists they've done nothing wrong. June 4th is coming again. We have been lighting candles in Victoria Park for 31 years, and we will continue in this for two years. But it's not to be. Police banned the memorial, citing yet again 
COVID-19 restrictions. Three days before June the 4th, Hong Kong's chief executive Carrie Lam issues this warning, seen by many as a veiled threat aimed at Chao's organization. As a lawyer, Chow knows the price they might have to pay. The national security law criminalizes secession, subversion, terrorism or collusion with foreign forces. Those found guilty could face a life sentence. Because our aims are to end one-party dictatorship. So the worst thing is that they will use that and say that this is a subversive organization and all the leadership is, <laughs> is committing the offense of subverting the country. On the morning of June the 4th, Chow is arrested. Earlier on social media, she had urged people to commemorate the crackdown wherever they were. Police say she'd broken the law. It is an offense under the public order ordinance. If anyone take part in or advertise or publicize an unauthorized assembly, the maximum penalty is five years imprisonment. A little past midday on June the 4th, police shut down large sections of Victoria Park. Hong Kong police will use whatever measures in order to maintain the public order and public safety. We believe it will be the most effective measure to prevent any unauthorized assembly. I must stress that unauthorized assembly is a very serious offence that facing the penalty of a maximum of five years imprisonment. It's not just Victoria Park that's under surveillance. Police are everywhere today. They conduct multiple stop searches. Towards evening, activist Raphael Wong and members of his group, the League of Social Democrats, set up a street stand, undeterred by dozens of police nearby. In previous years, Hong Kong's pro-democracy groups would line this road on the evening of June the 4th. Today, there's just a handful of activists. The national security law has been used against two prominent members from the League of Social Democrats. They're now in jail, awaiting trial. Two others are also serving sentences for protest-related offences. Wong himself has been charged with organising an unauthorised assembly during the 2019 protests and is due back in court soon. We over in the shopping district of Mong Kok, 20-year-old Wong Yat Jin from a group known as Student Politicism is also trying to speak up. 
一去到嗰陣時候，已經大概有四至五十名嘅警員喺我哋街站附近。我哋一嚟就抄咗佢身份證啦，然之後就話佢只係會隔離睇住。但我哋即係我哋都冇理到佢哋啦。咁我哋就繼續喺度開麥喺度講嘢喺度派我哋嘅單張。我哋唔學飛直，擺入街站，其實唔係為咗咩平反六四，亦唔係話為咗咩建設群建中國，因為我需要建設嘅係自由香港。當時就以兩條罪名拘捕我啦。第一條係係公眾地方行為不檢，咁第二條嘅話就涉嫌呢個左差辦公，咁當日六四就咁樣，大概八點鐘嘅時候就已經被人拘捕咗啦。Search my belongings, and uh, yeah. Nearby, police surround Raphael Wong and another activist. They'd been trying to walk towards the park. We think we have to walk out. 縱使我哋都會明白係有可能有個風險嘅，因為我哋唔知道警察會唔會拉我哋啊，或者係究竟國安法嗰個紅線啊，佢咁樣喐嚟喐去啊，會唔會牽連到我哋 ？Bags are searched, details taken. Eventually, police release the two men. But instead of leaving, the activists cross the road towards the park. 但有一個夢，不會死記著吧。無論遇產生多少他，只有應是會開花。但有一個夢，不會死記著吧。我哋抄咗佢，抄曬啦。麻煩人入去啊，唔該。They're led away, questioned. And then let go. It's unclear if they will face charges. Lie, lie, go, 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 Activist Wang Yatjin is out on bail. So this is four counts, four times arrested. Every count is one of the most important ones. There are some books, some teachers, and some other things. Every count is one of the most important ones. Every count is one of the most important ones. His alleged offences include unlawful assembly, disorderly behaviour in public, and inciting others to take part in unlawful assemblies. Every day. 香港都變化得好快好快，我哋唔敢諗未來，同埋都好驚我哋冇未來，因為我哋知道我哋所追求嘅嘢，呢、這個政權係唔會俾我哋，我哋一定以行動，係啊，一定要企出嚟。Yet Jin is relatively new to activism. 其實係二零一九年嘅六月九號，我人生第一次上街，第一次遊行，就係、是、因為當初嗰條送中條例。On that day, 
hundreds of thousands of Hong Kongers marched peacefully to protest a bill to amend the city's extradition law. They feared the change would undermine Hong Kong's autonomy and rule of law. When the government decided to press on with the second reading of the bill just days later, tens of thousands of Hong Kongers surrounded the Legislative Council complex. Chow Hang Tung is also out on bail. But she has more than just her own case to worry about. She's a lawyer for several opposition politicians detained for allegedly breaking the national security law. Do you go often to see people in prison? Yeah, quite, quite a lot of recent times. I think I've been going to prison for the last three days in a row, yeah. She's going again today to discuss a bail hearing with one of her clients. But she might not be able to act for him for much longer. You were expecting that if you are convicted, you will probably go to jail. So I have to return on the brief that may last beyond that time now. Some friends have urged Chow to step away from activism. Others have even suggested that she go into exile. I found that more difficult to bear than stay here and withstand the repression. You cannot have any effective means of working on issues that you, 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 you treasure. After a two-hour bus ride, we're finally at Stanley Prison. Chow is visiting today, but it's likely she'll be in jail one day, awaiting visitors. She insists she's ready. The alternative is just worse. Living a life where you can never speak freely, living a life that you have to uh, profess your loyalty and your love for the, for the party, right? And I, don't, I just, I think I'm more fearful of that kind of life than a life in prison, right? It's two days before the 24th anniversary of Hong Kong's handover to China. Police have banned the annual pro-democracy march, citing yet again COVID-related restrictions. Chow is representing activists appealing the decision. We're not allowed to film proceedings. An hour and a half later, it's all over. The appeal's been denied. For one and a half years since the COVID-19, we haven't seen a single protest being allowed. We keep on emphasizing in the hearing that it's the government duty, it's their obligation to facilitate protests, but they're not doing that. They're doing everything to stop all forms of expression, especially on this uh, very important day to the party, right? It's the 100th anniversary of the CCP. What do you plan to do on July 1st? I haven't quite decided. I quite want to go onto the streets, but I have been told that I may be needed as a lawyer, so I will have to see. Yeah. Chow doesn't get to make that decision. Police revoke her bail a day later, and she is rearrested and detained. It's the 1st of July, 2021, the 24th anniversary of the Hong Kong handover and the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China. The annual flag-raising ceremony is underway. Nearby, 
Raphael Wong and other members of the League of Social Democrats have a message for Beijing and the Hong Kong government. To comply with COVID rules, just four activists are protesting today. They march surrounded by scores of police and media. With the acting chief executive, the honourable. But it's a very different message from acting chief executive John Lee. Hong Kong Quiting,为国家安全,当尊重,尊重保障人权. 繼續依法享有言論、新聞、集會、示威等自由。Outside, security is tight. According to media reports, some 10,000 police have been deployed across Hong Kong today. They occupy roads at a shopping district that would normally be filled with pro-democracy street stands on this day. People are stopped, questioned and searched. Most of Victoria Park, traditionally the starting point of the annual march, is once again out of bounds. Wong Yat-jin has spent the morning watching live streams from various locations around Hong Kong. His group, Student Politicism, had earlier announced plans for a street stand on July the 1st. Several phone calls later, they have a plan. But by the time we get to Mong Kok, police appear to be one step ahead. He heads there anyway. His friends are waiting, and so are the police. It's not long before dozens of police surround them. Initially, police seem willing to let them proceed with a few restrictions. But then, something changes. And the three activists are led away. They're granted bail the next day. It is the fifth time Wong Yat Jin's been arrested. On a sweltering afternoon a few days later, a small group of Hong Kongers gather outside the West Kowloon Magistrates Court. Chow Hang Tong has just been denied bail and is being taken back to prison. C 
scenes like this are now a regular sight in Hong Kong, as more and more activists are arrested, charged and jailed. Supporters run off the prison vans, waving signs and shouting words of encouragement. They're for the Hong Kongers who refuse to play by the new rules. Candles in the wind.